This is Halloween, everybody. Scream. Hi, I'm Mitchell Ryan Darcy, and welcome to my vlog review series. And this month is October, um, and it's this is the first time I'm doing my horror marathon. So, break it down very simply. I have 31 days to watch 31 horror films that I've never seen before. Each For each film I'm going to do a review, check down below. There should be a chapter selection in the description for so that way if there's a movie you haven't seen and you don't want spoiled or review or see the review, you can skip it and go to the reviews that you want to see. Um, so 31 days, 31 horror films. I already got my list. Um, I got a whole bunch of films from, uh, I got like five or seven, somewhere around there, uh, Stephen King films, I got, I got John Carpenter film, I got Wes Craven film, all of which I haven't seen, I have lots to choose from, we got serial killers, we got monsters, we got paranormal, uh, we don't have any paranormal activity, but this year we do have, uh, I think we have some supernatural stuff. Uh, if not, I'm going to find out. So, obviously I'm not going to do the intro for each one. So, like the main titles. I'm only going to do the main titles once. And then the rest of it will just be reviews for out. So, here we go. Time for my horror marathon of horror. <laughs> Films today is a trilogy known as the uh, Sleepaway Camp trilogy. I did see clips online, and before I saw those clips online of scenes from the movie or whatever, I did see the robot chicken sketch where they kind of spoiled the ending of the first movie. So the first movie's not going to really have any big surprise for me other than what it feels like to sit through and watch the whole first movie from beginning to end. And I, I actually think I've seen clips from the second and third one as well. Um, but I haven't I haven't watched any of them from beginning to end. So I figure it was a good way to start off horror with just uh, I think I think it's eighties and I think it's almost like, you know, heavily inspired by Friday thirteenth and all that. Um, not really, I don't really remember anything else production wise, but, um, time to watch Camp Sleepaway. Well, I just watched Camp Sleepaway, or Sleepaway Camp, for some reason I keep reversing the title, um, uh, I think Camp Sleepaway sounds better than Sleepaway Camp, but Sleepaway Camp, um, yeah, because I, I remembered the certain clips in that, but I seeing the whole thing from beginning to end, um, I was surprised how much uh, it, was, it was actually, like, it was a bad movie, but it's just, it it was very easy to get through. Beginning to end, it wasn't, um, like, some of it was cheesy and all that, and there was a, a lot of the death scenes or whatever were, like, they, the actual killing scenes were covered a little too much that in some ways you're not sure exactly how they died. Um, but the reveal of the actual dead bodies afterwards, that's where the, you could definitely tell they put all the effort, makeup and everything wise, just in the revealing of the dead bodies at way after they've been killed. Um, some of it was a little bit way over the top, um, uh, like the, the B1 specifically, uh, if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about, um, yeah, the, the twist, if you know, because I already, because of Robot Chicken, this, this twist ending was actually spoiled for me, 
Oh my god, someone actually remembered this movie and wrote a comedy sketch about it. <laughs> I love that line. The whole movie, watching it, uh, the twist, uh, it's kind of, it gives a new perspective watching it from beginning to end and knowing what the twist is. And I, I think, you know, you know what, considering this movie was in the uh, 1982 or free, um, it, it was, it was kind of a, it was still kind of surprising to us. Like, I'm just trying to think, like, in the terms of horror films, I haven't watched a lot of horror films because I'm not, I'm not a total horror guy. I'm not really a fan of horror, but I do really appreciate horror and film in general. Um. Uh, so I haven't really watched a lot of horror films, but from what I've seen, I the whole twist is like it felt definitely kind of a little bit ahead of its time. Um, especially also a couple of other things that are in the film as well. It's just interesting seeing such a really early uh, version of it, a twist involving uh, well, I'm not gonna beat around the bush anymore. Angela was really a guy all along, so wow. Like, you know, if I if if, <laughs> if it wasn't for that twist, would this movie even hold up? Because you know, you're you're watching this and you're like, oh it's just a, a really rip off version of Friday the thirteenth without anything that's original or iconic. And then that twist happened and that reveal and all that and it's like it kind of makes this movie like its own thing it's it's kind of a really iconic ending in the sense of well first of all that mask <laughs> i remember i think i read somewhere or whatever it's like it was the the ending reveal it was a guy wearing a mask and then they, they made a mask of and angela and it's just from the the wide shot away it's just like the mask is, is pretty <laughs> pretty freaking terrifying of a face like so yeah it was it was um surprisingly i liked it i enjoyed it thing is i think if i remember correctly the second third one like most horror films and most sequels in general is, you know, there will be a decline in quality and what they did. So the second and third one, I don't really have any, uh, any expectations, except it's probably my expectations is a lot lower than this one. Uh, because I mean, it's like after doing such a interesting twist and ending for this one it's like what, what would you do for a second and third one i mean for example the surviving characters would obviously return but it's like i don't think there's going to be any other twists or anything i think from here on out it's just going to be parroting other not parroting like a comedy but like referencing and paying homage to other famous horror films around that time and earlier. Um, like, for example, in the first one, there was the, the shower scene. They kind of did their own version. Because, I mean, they could have did it, like, shot for shot, like the Psycho one, but they chose not to, so... It's either the second or third one had the poster with the uh, Freddy Krueger claw and the Jason mask and the chainsaw, Leatherface chainsaw. So... It's definitely at this point, it's like, oh, we're just gonna do whatever, I guess. So, time to watch Sleepaway Camp 2. Not really excited. I just watched Sleepaway Camp 2. It was really good? Nah, not at all. Oh my gosh, it was... <laughs> um, like, when you start off, the movie with a death that is so horribly done like she she whacks the girl with a giant 
like long and the way the blood comes out all of a sudden is and it's just pouring out it's just it's cheesy and it like it's it doesn't even go full cheesy like it's trying to go for realism but the delay and the editing it's just <sighs> some of the worst death scenes i've ever seen in a horror film without a doubt music not that great especially compared to the first one because the first one had really good music which i forgot to mention but the timing of the music i loved how on the nose it was with lines and what was happening the music this movie forgettable music forgettable overall i mean the only memorable thing is basically she's the the killer is then you know who the killer is from the beginning to the end and it's just her doing a crime wave <laughs> like I mean it wasn't entirely that bad it was just bare bare uh, bare barely okay enough like it's okay and bad like it's just in between nothing spectacular uh, death scenes weren't <laughs> really yeah really horribly done some of them um, not really as creative and most of it wasn't even shown anyways so it's like some of it it would go most all out and then it would not like ugh. anyways there was a totally unnecessary dream sequence where it just it basically recapped all the previous killings in this film like it's the kind of thing where they you would usually edit that for the first film but where they would show clips from the first film but instead of that they just show the clips that were in the second film that you've you've literally just watched and just repeat them again that was a totally unnecessary dream sequence that that could have been cut out of the film absolutely anyways time to watch the third one uh teenage wasteland i think it's called i mean sleep away camp free teenage wasteland where this one was uh ha unhappy campers so am i excited for the third one not really i guess i'll just see i just watched sleep away camp free and in all honesty i think it's better than the second one just plot and the creativity with the deaths and all that I think it is better than the second one, but nowhere near as good as the first one, even though the first one was bad, so it's... I guess it was entertaining to sit through all three, I'm not gonna lie, it's like, I kind of want to see a fourth one. Yeah, that's what the third one, the third one makes me want to watch the fourth one, but the thing is, the fourth one apparently, if I remember correctly, um, they never finished, or something like that. I don't know, but, uh, I guess this is the last one that is available on Blu-ray and all that, so I don't think the fourth one is completed, and if it is, it's not as, nowhere near as good as the first one, and... Yeah, so Sleepaway Trilogy was a very interesting way to start off this year's horror films. Some some good moments, some interesting moments. Um, yeah, I, 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 I kind of like the third one. The third one, the third one was like uh, just very interesting what they decided to do with it and where to go with it. And uh, once again, the deaths, um, only this time it was a little more creative. And, but the thing is, as soon as it, this is the kind of film where they should have just went all out with the deaths, like the blood and the gore and stuff, but, you know, as soon as it gets good, it cuts to another scene or a different location. Almost like, it's like, oh, this is too violent or something like that, so, um, I think this, this trilogy in general would have benefited a lot better if, it, if they just sort of went all out special effects on that like like it seemed to me like in the first one they spent more time on the special effects for when they find the body than when the actual death took place um yeah even 
even editing and stuff, it just, you know, it cuts to another scene or whatever. Or, during the brutal death, they would do a really close-up, and it's sort of, uh, uh, you don't, you can kind of assume what's happening, but not so much. So, but for the most part, yeah, the third one's better than the second one. First one is best of the trilogy uh, for Sleepaway Camp. So, if you like horror, uh, particularly 80s slasher, like if you like the Friday the 13th series, you might kind of like the Sleepaway Camp series. Um, yeah, because it's sort of in that style with the camp and all that, so it's like, I think they even yeah they made reference in this one. They're like, oh, what day is it? It's it's uh, Saturday the fourteenth, and <laughs> it's like it's the day after Friday fourteenth and all that. So yeah, there's little little things like that throughout the film and that. There was another unnecessary scene in the third one with when she's going through the building. And they cut to flashback of her singing the happy camper song from the second film, but the thing is what she was looking at was a different part of the place than w the memory was implying she was remembering. Like, that should have happened. Technically, they should have edited that if they were going to do that. And all honestly, I would have cut out that whole remembering scene where she's looking around and they cut to that scene and back. Uh, I would have cut that out totally because uh, it was unnecessary. If they were gonna put that in, they should have put it in the because they re it, they reused the same set for a bit as the second movie in the third movie because that's where it takes place story wise same area uh, where the first one was a camp that was farther away so um, so when she first walked in that's where she should have had the memories of her singing and singing the happy camper song. That's really my only problem with the third one. And the first one, the dream sort of sequence or whatever, or the flashback or whatever, that's the only time that it was used properly and, well, compared to the second and third one, is done well. Um, which is kind of not saying a lot for the trilogy, but yeah. So if you like, you know, 80s, uh, I think the third one was 80s as well. Yeah, so all three films were in the 80s. It's pretty interesting, and uh, yeah, so moving on, next one. Okay, so next up we got one I'm really excited to see, Total Blind Buy. Um, if you've seen my other videos, you already know what it is. Uh, Bubba Hotep. I only bought it because Bruce Campbell's in it. I'm sorry, I, I have to see more of his stuff. You know, I love the Evil Dead trilogy. I love all his appearances throughout Sam Raimi's filmography. So, it'd be awesome to see him in another film. And it's also starring uh, O.C. Davis. Um, he looks familiar, but I, I don't know. I am really haven't seen anything from the film. I just know... The sense I'm getting from the cover and all that is... Uh, Bruce Campbell plays Elvis, um, or a impersonator, and it looks like there's like a mummy or something. I don't know. I, I'm so curious to find out. Uh, expectation, I mean, I know Sam Raimi is not the one directing this, and I don't think he's involved in the production, but um, at the very least... I hope Bruce Campbell gives a entertaining performance. That's like the minimum I'm expecting from this film. So, boom. Time to watch Bubba Hotep. If I'm even saying that name right. I just watched Bubba Hotep. Oh, man. That was a pretty original uh, film. Uh... <laughs> And pretty unique for a uh, horror film. Uh, even setting and just, just how the film was handled with its original like characters and that. It's, it's like it was absurd. And it was decent. Um, I was actually surprised just overall just thinking back to the film. 
just there's not a lot to the film. It's a good story overall. I didn't see any trailers or anything, so expectation wise or expecting, it's like the only other film I got to compare Bruce Campbell to is the Evil Dead series. So it's like you know, when you compare something to that, it's not gonna hold up. So on its own, I think it was good and well done. And surprisingly what you get out of, uh, it definitely had that low budget feel to the movie. And I think they pulled it off pretty well. I mean, it's, it was nothing spectacular like Evil Dead or The Thing or something like that. Not the original, original, the John Carpenter one. Fun little film. Uh, great acting. Uh... Both Bruce Campbell and uh, Ozzy Davis. I'm still trying to figure out where I've seen him before. They both really own the role uh, that they played. And I think it was... <laughs> it's just absurdly great, this film. That's the... <laughs> that's that's what you call this film, is absurdly great. Apparently the director who did this did... Uh, I was reading up on the back here. The director who did Phantasm did this movie... And he also directed uh, John Dies at the End. And uh, I've seen John Dies at the End. And I did not like that film that much. I mean, there was like one or two couple good things. But overall, I, I kind of disliked the film. I would probably have to rewatch it again. But, um, but yeah, this is good. Um, if you're a fan <laughs> of... Uh, very low budget, a little bit cheesy horror. This is the film for you. Especially if, if you've seen Bruce Campbell and enjoy him, then you'll definitely enjoy this one. He does a pretty good job with uh, Elvis Presley. Next up, where I'll be watching something a little more modern, and that is The Woman in Black 2. Now, I've seen the first one in theaters. I I loved the first one. It was I thought it was really well done. I loved the atmosphere and the whole story with the film. Um, Daniel Radcliffe did a really good job, and it's just I I really liked the first Woman in Black. So a couple years later, they decided to do the sequel. So and the thing is, I don't remember this coming out in theaters. I I think it just sort of. I think it might have went straight to video, I'm not sure, but um, I'm not too excited about the second one. Um, I think the first one ended fine as it did, and um, there was, I mean, scratch that. They can continue the story, but um, they don't really need to, like, bring back, you know, characters of the first one. It doesn't even have to be related to the first one, and so my only really hope for the second one, which... From what I've heard, I've heard that it takes place like decades afterwards. So, and it's a totally new story, um, but it still revolves around the woman in black. So, I think that would be, I think that's really the only way you can make a sequel with this. It's not something stupid where it's like a character who did die in the first one is brought back or stuff like that. It's, it's from what I'm, I'm getting at, takes place years later. I have no idea what decade, but uh, it doesn't really say anything on the back. Like, it just has special features, and it's really bare bones on the back. So, but I, I really like this case. <laughs> it has the softness and the, the hands or the different material, so it feels like you're, you know, touching the hands. So, it's a, I think that's a really cool slipcover. Anyways, I don't even know if, if it's the same director. Who did this? Um, from what it looks like, it's just the producers who did the first Woman in Black. So, but I will say that trailer for the Woman in Black, the first one, that is a really well done trailer. Um, I think it was the first one they did, trailer wise. But I think that was a really well done trailer, and then it actually made me, someone who doesn't like horror, want to go to the theater to see the horror film. So, second one. Don't really have high hopes, especially the fact that track, red, track records with 
horror films, usually the sequels are not that great. I'm trying my best to go with low expectations. I don't remember much from the first one, except, uh, um, I, I remember, I remember things, but I don't remember, like, it's been so long since I've seen it. Um, I don't think I've seen it since Feeders. But, yeah. Here we go. The Woman in Black. Well, that sucked. <laughs> pretty sad uh, first one was so good um, but let's say this on its own yeah it's, it's not it's not that great it's okay at the like very least like it's it's uh, forgettable characters and all that and and really it's 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 quite unfortunate um, really the kid the kid was probably the most memorable out of the whole thing, and, you know, <laughs> bad script, just overall, um, like, it doesn't really do anything new, like, it doesn't, it doesn't advance or add to the story that was the original, and if you love the first one, I guess check out the second one to see what you think, but, like, <laughs> by the end of it, it's like, was there really a reason to do the sequel, other than to make money or just you know make money I mean that's the whole point of it it's like I mean it wasn't a total cash grab it was quite low budget um, really it's the really the whole point to watch the second one is just to you know return to the setting which was the first one only it's uh yeah I was right it, if I remember correctly I said it takes place like later on like decades later and it was like I think 30 or 40 years afterwards so it's like 1940s and it's like dealing with the war and all that and it's like they they barely like the war aspect they did use or very well but it's just it's on the horror side under the the woman in black side of things it's like it doesn't take advantage of anything and doesn't it doesn't bring anything new really it's just it's like they need they use the war to get them there use the war to prevent them from leaving right away and then you know use the war for a major set piece and then it's like yeah it felt pointless pointless sequel it's unfortunate hoping for better uh, once again really the setting is the best part Better, better than the kid was the setting. <laughs> because the thing I love about the first one was the atmosphere and the and just the overall look of everything and the, you know I the marsh, the location, it's such an important key to the woman in black and all that. And you know, they brought it back for the second one. It's a little more run down and doesn't look nowhere near as good as the first one, but that's what the story. It's forty years afterwards, no one's lived there since. So it's like Yeah, I I, I, I kinda wanna say to pass if like if you see this, but you know. Like if you if you didn't like the first one, yeah, don't, don't definitely don't see the second one. It's not gonna change your mind or anything, so yeah, that's enough about the woman in black. Uh, I'm gonna move on. Uh, nice case, though. The case is better than the movie. <laughs> uh, that's unfortunate. Well, next up, I'm quite excited. It's a uh, Wes Craven film. Yeah, shocker. I'm so excited to watch this. Um, I have no idea what to expect other than I assume it's a prison guy who gets executed, but he takes his revenge so he survives or something i don't know i haven't really read up on it tagline no more mr Gu no more mr nice guy is the tagline i'm expecting uh that alice cooper song no more mr nice guy um so i expect that song somewhere in this i have no idea if it's actually related or not or if that's just the tagline but you know i'm, I'm kind of hoping that song's in it but yeah it's a west craven film uh Last year, I did a lot of Wes Craven films. Uh, I did the uh, the People Under the Stairs. 
which is a crazy fun film. Oh my gosh, I love that one. Uh, that was really good. Um, the Serpent and the Rainbow I really enjoyed as well. Um, trying to think. Can't really remember off the top of my head what other Wes Anderson ones I watched last year as part of the horror movie marathon. So unfortunately, this is the only Wes Anderson film I'm watching this year. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Hold, wait, first of all, you're not going to speed past that like you didn't just say what you just said. Actually, this is the only Wes Anderson film. Wes Anderson film. Wes Anderson film. Fortunately, this is the only Wes Anderson film I'm watching this year. So, hope I hope it's a good one. I love Wes Craven's films uh, so far. And, like, none of them have been, like, bad or disliked. Each one has, you know, was very interesting and in how they did it and all that and cool special effects and editing and camera choices and all that. So, um, I'm kind of excited and I hope by the end of it, I'll be shocked. Several bad puns later. How good? So good. I just watched Shocker and OMG. This one was really entertaining. From start to finish, I was so into the movie. Um, even though there was some problems, I felt, um, not script-wise, but, like, what they set up and what they do with it later on and that, especially, like, the last, like, ten minutes of the movie and all that. Total craziness, but you know what? It was so enjoyable that... Even though I did notice some of it, it's just, it's sort of like, what, what? But, yes, really great. Loved it. Oh, my gosh. Uh, right away, I noticed right in the, right in the first, <laughs> first 30 seconds of the film, I'm like, yeah, okay, this is going to be fun. Like, you got the rock music, a really great opening title sequence and all that. And then it's like, <sighs> and then it's like, this, this movie reminded me of why... I loved Wes Craven's films in the beginning. Like, when I first watched Nightmare on Elm Street, I was like, I love this. I, and then it's like, this reminded me of all his other great films. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> Special effects, I'm surprised, held up. And some of it was like, well, that's actually pretty cool looking. For the most part, you know, considering this movie came out in, what, the 80s? Yeah, 89. Apparently, that's what the back of the case is telling me. Yeah, so I knew right away with the rock music and all that, I knew this movie will have the No More Mr. Nice Guy song in it, and it did. And Alice Cooper was in it. I, I think I saw him twice. Uh, it's a little bit of a cameo sort of thing. Um, but yeah, it was... Oh, man. I, I This is currently the best out of the horror marathon I've watched so far. I don't know, maybe one of my other ones that I have lined up is gonna beat this one. I don't know, but currently this is this is definitely my favorite of the ones I've watched and the one I would consider the overall best. It's just it was just story wise was so original and everything is just Mwah! marvelous. Uh it was finger licking good. <laughs> Oh man, the lines of dialogue in this film. Next up is Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies. Now, I'm a little bit excited for this just because I loved um, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Uh, in case you didn't know, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter movie was based off the book of the same name and the author who did that book did Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies, and uh, this is the film adaptation of that book. So, um, I hope to be it to be on the same level as Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, just in terms of overall fun and action and changing of history and that. But it's just, well, I've never really seen Pride and Prejudice. I hope I've been saying that name right the whole time, but. Uh, I'm not familiar with the book, the story, or anything, so I just know it's, I, I think it's a romance, Pride and uh, Prejudice. And I can only assume story-wise what parts are 
relay to the story and what parts the zombies interfere with. So, I'm hoping for it to be fun. I mean, you got an interesting cast. Uh, the one I'm looking forward to the most is Matt Smith. So, let's see what he does in this film. Uh, <laughs> so, anyways, time to watch uh, Pride and Prejudice plus Zombies. I just watched Pride and Prejudice. And zombies. <laughs> and you know what? It was not bad. It wasn't exactly good, but decent enough. I've never seen Pride and Prejudice, so I kind of understood basically anything where it wasn't zombies was probably from the original novel, but I'm not too sure. I'm trying to figure out what what takes the place of zombies or what's what's the story like without zombies so uh, I'm probably sure they probably went off of the original source but I can't tell because I well I've never seen the originals or book or anything so because of this movie I'm now a little bit interested in seeing Brian Bridges whatever movie version I'm sure there's been a couple in history so Matt Smith was good um, I was trying to figure out where some of the other actors and actresses were from and um, I didn't recognize the main girl until the end and I realized that's the girl who played the waitress in Baby Driver uh, and she did a really good job I mean the cast in general did a really good job despite the material that they're adapting <laughs> the thing is Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter is a much better movie overall uh, if you compare the two, uh, just story-wise and, you know, budget and everything. And it's just, there's a reason why they didn't start with adapting this one first and then do Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. The reason Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter they did first is because it's so much more marketable of a movie. Because you know what you're getting into. You're like, okay, here's Abraham Lincoln and then here's him being a vampire hunter. Like, it's very marketable. Where this, it's like Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. You're going to attract the audiences who love zombies, but uh, how many audience members have actually seen Pride and Prejudice or know of Pride and Prejudice and the original material and all that? So it's like, it's not as entertaining as, say, you take some other novel like uh, Moby Dick and be like, and zombies. Wow, that, that sounds cool. Uh, <laughs> like, there's so many other novels that you can mix, but um, the movie that this is based off of, uh, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, uh, I'm sure they... Like, it's kind of... For a novel to combine the two, that's kind of cool, but to adapt that into a movie, the movie obviously will fall flat just because... Just, I think, just, just the combination of the two. It just, even though the cast did a really good job, and story-wise was actually the bare minimum decent, that I, if you, if you saw Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter, and was thinking of checking out this movie, sure, check it out. I enjoyed it as bare minimum as I enjoyed it. <laughs> that makes any sense at all. Anyways... Ah, that's enough about that film. So next up, I'm going to watch Steven Spielberg's supposed very first film, uh, Duel. Suspense, thriller, action, maybe a bit horror, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I guess I, I, I'm under the impression there's an element of horror to this film. I mean... From what I get without, I try not to read the back or anything, but I assume it's like a truck is like after someone. So it's kind of like that little bit in Jeepers Creepers with the truck sort of like stalking them. And then that Stephen King movie, the one where the truck is, uh, forget the name of it. I think it was like Maximum Overdrive. I could be mistaken, but... You know, I assume it's something like that. You know, it's like... So, should be very interesting watching this, just because it is one of the greatest directors alive right now. 
very first film so should be interesting and you know obviously being the first film i'm going to compare it to every other director's first film even though i shouldn't but you know it's something you can't really avoid when watching a lot of films is comparing it to other films so uh should be very interesting can't wait to watch it my god duel is such a great suspense film at its very basic level oh man it was really good um yeah i can see the 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 be beginning of jeepers creeper the first one was i i would assume is an homage to this movie because uh that was pretty intense like the the hold off just him and a truck for like an hour hour and 30 minutes like that's really well done suspense um yeah highly recommend if you haven't seen this if you like suspense you you'll like this because it builds and um the climax doesn't hold up as well but it's still a decent climax to considering what the film is and came out in the 70s 1971 i think somewhere around there but uh yeah steven spielberg did a really good job for his first film um Especially uh, whoever did director of photography and all that. Because, uh, yeah, really well done. Uh, just the, just even the, because there, it's, you can't have the entire film just be them in the cars, but, I mean, you could, but they broke it up with a couple scenes of pit stops along throughout, and my gosh, really well done. Especially the, the Chuck's, like, diner. Man trying to figure out stuff oh so suspense and then the paranoia of when you're thinking about something too long and it's it, really well done um i like it i enjoy it so kind of remind me it's like jaws but instead of a shark it's a diesel truck you know like a flammable big rig truck so yeah really cool well it's around this time in the horror marathon month. It's Thanksgiving, the time to, you know, eat a lot of food, celebrate being together and alive and well and be thankful for all of everything and all that. So it just so happens that it's now time to watch The Witch. So it just, it was kind of ironic this fell near Thanksgiving. Um, I don't know if it's Thanksgiving theme, but it definitely it, it. I think if I remember correctly from the trailers, it takes place in like uh, was it 1800s? No, 1630. Okay, that's that's all I'm looking at backwise. Is apparently it takes place in New England and 1630. So that's a long time ago, and I don't know when Thanksgiving started or whatever. But whatever, I I assume it's kind of Thanksgiving theme. <laughs> I don't know. But anyways, uh, apparently there's a witch. Trailer looked really good. Uh, if I remember correctly, it definitely made me want to say, hmm, I'm interested in seeing that film. So, years later, they came out with Steelbook. HMV was going out of business, had a sale, picked it up, all that jazz. So, yeah. Apparently, it's uh, certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. So, I guess it's going to be, at the very least, a good film. That's what I'm expecting. So, time to watch The Witch. I just watched The Witch, and my gosh, cinematography was amazing. And just the whole atmosphere of what they did. Simple story, but just really, really well done. Um, yeah. Uh, well acted. My gosh, this is probably like the best acting I've ever seen kids do in a horror related film. Um, especially the fact that they they take up the bulk of the film as well. So, um, really well done. Um, yeah. I, I'm just so used to modern horror films just using the jump scare as a cheap tactic. And in this movie, there wasn't really 
specific jump scares, but the, the, it's just the way it's done. It's I'm I'm praising it for what they did, um, just in general. Like the like the parts where if it was any other horror film, it was, would there would be jump scares or they would put something in there and then just to scare the audience but they didn't have to do that just the suspense the creepiness and what they showed and what they decide not to show it just uh really well done yeah my gosh uh if you haven't seen the witch uh, i would definitely recommend checking it out um if you're you know love horror and really good um uh, felt really original despite it you know it's based off of um they said at the end it was based off, they confirmed it was based off of stuff they read with what happened back then with uh, trials and all that and dialogue and all that. So it felt pretty authentic. Uh, <laughs> the ending might be a little bit weird for some, but, but I think, it, I think, it was, I think the ending works with this film really good uh yeah anyways time to see what's next i'm seriously way behind on this month's horror marathon I'm supposed to watch at least one day but because of uh thanksgiving and then the fact that i've been trying to get a video done that i've been working on for like a while trying to get that done before a certain day and that day has passed so now I'm, <laughs> I'm struggling to get it out as soon as possible and so all my other videos are suffering because of it so today I'm gonna watch as a break from editing uh, I'm gonna watch Grindhouse I have seen Death Proof the director's cut but I haven't seen Planet Terror any version of it and plus also I haven't seen Grindhouse as in Together, which is the, this is the edit of the film that has both films and the trailers in the middle and trailers on the outside. I'm not sure. I haven't actually seen it, but you know, it has a whole bunch of stuff and it's really long. It's like a three hour edit uh, featuring both films and you know, it, it's going to be nice to see what the original thing is. And plus also I haven't really seen Planet Terror at all, so I'll count this as one movie I haven't really seen. Um, I have seen Death Proof. Death Proof I love. I, I think it's a very underrated Quentin Tarantino film. Death Proof. Really well done. Um, and I've seen the director's cut. So I'm, I'm wondering what is what did he leave out for the theatrical Grindhouse version of the film. So that's going to be the thing I'm wondering about. So anyways, time to watch Grindhouse. Oh, and also, I, I think I've heard somewhere that Edgar Wright directed one of the trailers. Like, the little guest trailers in between. But I, I don't know if that's true or which one he did, so... Be interesting to see which... Try and figure out which one he did. Anyways, time to watch Grindhouse. Well, I just watched Grindhouse. Um, the double feature, Planet Terror, some trailers, and... Death Proof, and I've already seen Death Proof, the director's cut, um, but seeing the non-director's cut with the whole Grindhouse experience was really good. I really liked it, really enjoyed it. Planet Terror was friggin' crazy, and um, I was shocked to learn the, because the Grindhouse style with the missing reels, I thought was absolutely hilarious. Um, and then for Death Proof, the missing reel was like the, the whole, uh, uh, lap dance scene, which was a really good scene, and it's in, only in the director's cut that I guess. So it makes me wonder, I have to track down Planet Terror director's cut. I don't know if there is one, but I definitely have to find that and, uh, <laughs> get it and watch it, because I, 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 I was, I was so invested in Planet Terror, like in the beginning I was like, eh, it's okay whole military scene I was like this is a little just crazy and then and then the whole like two-thirds 
rest of the film was just, I was like, I, at that point, I didn't even want it to end. It was just so crazy over the top and uh, gruesome, and I, I just really, I really liked Planet Terror. Um, and then watching the whole experience, going into Death Proof, it was a little, um, I'm actually kind of surprised they decided to go with Death Proof last and not do Death Proof trailers and then uh, ended off of Planet Terror. I'm actually surprised they decided to start off with Planet Terror. But, um, you know what? I did enjoy it as is. By Death Proof, it's... I guess they kind of did that. So by the time you get to Death Proof, you think it's going to be over top gory. And, I mean, there is a couple... Like, the crash scene is really well done. One of the best crash scenes in film, in, in my opinion. And, um... I think at that point you're expecting uh, most of them to die with the ending of Death Proof because of what you just saw with Planet Terror, but by <laughs> the very end shocks you because you're surprised at the ending. It was building up expectation, and what were you expecting was most of them to die, but they didn't, and it was really... <laughs> it just It's really cool seeing it back-to-back -back in this format. Uh, the trailers was great. I love that part of the uh, the part of the intermission between the films. They showed trailers. I think there was like three or four of them, and I I, I <laughs> the Edgar Wright trailer was absolutely hilarious. Loved it. Oh my gosh. Don't. Oh my god. It was brilliant. As soon as it started, I, I was like, what were they going for? And then it's like. Ten seconds later, I knew what they were going for, and they absolutely hilarious, almost spoof of like horror genre in general. Um, definitely, <laughs> I, I I think I love that trailer more than the actual whole Grindhouse experience. But um, what gave it away for me because they didn't actually set it didn't actually say Edgar Wright in the film. Um, I think I saw Nick Frost. I think he was one of the the people in the don't trailer, but I'm not sure. I, I it happened so fast. But anyways, very good. If you haven't, if if you've seen the director's cut of Eater Film and haven't seen the whole Grindhouse cut, I would recommend a watch. Definitely, it, it's really cool, really neat. Those trailers are absolutely hilarious, uh, and <laughs> yeah, and it's kind of funny in its own sense. So it's. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, definitely recommend it. I just found, I found another interesting thing with Death Proof that near the end, uh, Quentin Tarantino didn't really do the whole, because the grindhouse with the really old film and it's really scratched and all that was throughout the film and there's those edits and all that, but for some reason the ending of Death Proof, that whole stretch of the film with the vanishing point car and all that, was really clear and really HD and there was no, like, it didn't have as much of a noticeable film quality to it. I wonder if Quentin Tarantino did that on purpose. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to rewatch. I, I definitely want to try and find Planet Terror Director's Cut and watch that. And I also want to rewatch. They have on here special features. They have uh, Planet Terror with the um, audience track. And I'm like, I want to. I want to hear the <laughs> the audience react to that film. Um, so, yeah, definitely it was, it was great. What will I watch next? Well, apparently up next I have a couple, uh, I have two Stephen King movies that I'm going to watch for the first time. So, I have like five days to catch up and watch 21 horror films that I've never seen before. Okay, let's see if I can do it. Uh, right now... That's about that's about five horror films a day. Well, I looked the math; it's four point two, but I can't watch point two of a film. So five films a day, O M G! And I got some long ones coming up, like two part, uh, like uh, well, you can already guess what two, maybe guess what those two films are. But anyways, right now I got two Stephen King films lined up. I got. Firestarter and Cell, both of which I've never seen. So one older, this movie, I think it was 80s, and then this movie just recently came out in the last five years. 
So um, I'm interested in both of these, but let's start off with Firestarter, Firestarter. Um, Stephen King Firestarter, a, a really cool art. Uh, I assume it's about a girl. Yeah, the who, girl who has fire powers, I guess. That's the only thing I can guess. So it's like Carrie, but with fire, I think. I could be mistaken. I have no idea what to expect from the movie. Never read the book, never read... Uh, like, I, I barely read the back. I just glanced over it slightly, and I, I saw Drew Barrymore's... Drew, Drew Barry, Barrymore? Drew Barrymore's uh, name and George C. Scott. That's all I know from the film. So, um, is it going to be good? I hope it's going to be good. Uh, I, I, I'm, if there's not a big fire finale, then... Uh, then this movie does not deserve the title of Firestarter. So I'm expecting that at the very least. I mean, the cover art, everything's on fire. So it's like, there has to be lots of fire in this movie. That's that's my that's my expectation right there. So time to watch Firestarter. I just watched Firestarter and it was okay. You know, it just, it was an okay film. I, I mean, a lot of it just felt a little bit too staged or planned out. It's sort of like the movie, it just felt like, like it did feel like I was watching a, a literal adaptation of the book. Like it felt like it, the movie was restricted to what the book did and it just, it just, it was a little too staged for me. Um, like, it was okay from beginning to end, and the overall story, I can really see where the, where the novel is and all that, and it didn't, I mean, I've never read the novel, but just from seeing it, I'm like, I, I felt they did, per, did, I felt they stayed pretty true to the novel in the sense that it felt like they were stuck with whatever the novel did and they, they, they're like oh, okay well this isn't the novel we kind of have to do this that's that's what it felt like um there was fire and for the first two or three fourths of the film fire effects were pretty good and what they did but the the, the where it really fell apart was the last 15, 20 minutes of the movie, the last major action scene, per se, and that's when it sort of fell apart. Like, it was epic, and there was lots of fire effects and all that, but um, first thing, it's like, I don't know how obvious this was in the theatrical version and all that. Like, this is the same version, it's just, you know, higher quality. So, all the, there's certain effects where there's, you can tell there was a string. Like, you, you know those movies where you can see the strings and all that? Um, the, it just started, it, like, it was very brief, and I was like, oh, okay, I caught that. But if I wasn't looking for it, I wouldn't have found it and all that. And then, and then as it progressed and got more and more action, it just got to the point where it was just, all I saw was the strings and the really cheesy effects and all that. And, and it actually got a little boring, like... <laughs> I mean, the, the, the major action scene, the first half of it, you were like, oh, this is exciting, this is good, you know, getting revenge and all that, and then it's like, the last, last bit of the thing, you were bored, because you're like, okay, I already saw you do a fireball, I already saw you do this, and it just kept sort of repeating, and then, I, it just... It was, it was an okay movie overall, um, okay movie overall, it's some mistakes and all that with the strings and all that, I don't think they were supposed to intentionally be that obvious, but they were pretty obvious, I mean, I do, I do praise that it, most of it, looked like 95% of it looked like it was practical, practical effects, so I do praise that, but it's just, it was just, they got, near the end, the more they used it, the more obvious it was. Um, especially with the burst in the flames and the people running around on fire, you can tell it's, they're wearing, like, a mask and thicker clothing to, you know, protect themselves from the fire. 
there's so many little things um, during a crucial uh, scene just prior to the big epic finale uh, I noticed the section where before the fire started in that final location um, that the lighting in the background did the lighting as if a fire just started but continuity wise the fire hasn't started yet so it's kind of telling that that the fire is about to begin way before it actually begins so that was a little bit of a uh, either editing or continuity problem right there in the last bit and it's just it is interesting because I caught that so simply and the strings I mean I, I don't know, am I the only one who, on the first viewing, saw them, like, it got progressively more obvious as it went through the ending? Anyways, um, next up is, uh, Cell. Well, my expectations for Cell is, uh, <sighs> I hope it's a little more entertaining than Firestarter. Yeah, that's my expectations for Cell. Okay, here we go. Time to watch Cell. I just watched Cell. And... Very interesting. It's sort of like Stephen King's uh, take on zombie genre, but done his way. And I don't know how much... It's probably this movie, I assume this is... Uh, I assume just from the the actual overall story and what they did with it. I'm pretty sure they really either updated it or um, altered it from the original story, but I'm not sure because I haven't read the actual book. And same thing with Firestarter. See, Firestarter, it felt like it was really close to the book. Like, it felt like I was watching a book adaptation. This one did not have that feeling uh, except for a little bit, but, um, yeah, I, it makes me want to read the book. I guess that's a good thing, because the movie was entertaining, um, at least very much for the first, first half or so. Uh, second half was, you know, it, it go, went through it, and, you know, you were along for the ride, and you didn't feel like, you know, leaving. You just wanted to see what would happen, or what, how it will end. And you know, the ending, a little weird, um, I'm not going to lie, I can kind of understand the ending, kind of not, I don't know, I'm like, it's like they, uh, they, <laughs> the way it was done ending wise was just a little weird. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It makes it, I I want to want to read the book just to see, you know, how it actually ended and all that. Where this the movie, it just it was a very weird ending. Uh, I mean, John Cusack and Samuel L. Jackson both did a good job, but it just felt like script wise, Samuel L. Jackson was there just to read, uh, you know, epic quotes and Bible stuff and all that, and it's. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you like zombie movies, check it out. It's just a, a, nothing too special. Um, the airport scene at the beginning was really, I think, the... Not... Yeah, I, I would say that was the highlight of the entire film when, when shit hit the fan. Um, but other than that, it just went tame overall. Or some interesting other parts... Uh, yeah, the second half, the second, the first half of the film is probably the most highlight and best part of the entire thing. I'm just thinking, because ever since I saw The Dark Tower, the movie with Matthew McConaughey and all that, um, I reminded myself that all of Stephen King's books are kind of like, they're related, they're in the same universe and that, so um, whenever they mention, you know, person red or whatever, I'm thinking, uh, is it related to the Crimson King or whatever or stuff or, I, I don't know. I need, I need your guys' help. Let me know. Firestarter and Cell, and I think a couple more Stephen King ones later on. Let me know what you guys thought of the adaptation because, you know, the only Stephen King book I've read is The Shining and the short story for um, Shawshank Redemption. 
I think that's the only two things I've read by Stephen King. I, I own a whole bunch of Stephen King books, but those are really the only two I've read. Um, if you even count the Shawshank mini story or short story as an entire book on its own, which it isn't. It's the whole book is a bunch of mini stories together. But anyways, yeah, if you like Stephen King, check it out, I guess. It was a little more, it, it, I found it a little bit better than Firestarter, but I appreciate Firestarter a lot more for what it did. This one, I, it was dirt cheap. It was like $2. Midnight Movie. Now, I've never heard of this movie. I saw it on Blu-ray in a used store for 2 bucks, and I was like, okay, what is this? And and I was reading it, and it's basically, they go, there's some, there's a whole bunch of people go to see, it's, it's something to do with film, and what they're watching starts to become reality or something like that. So I was already sort of hooked premise wise I'm like okay they're going to see um, uh, or a screening of a film and the film starts killing them off or something I'm like okay I'm that's crazy I want to see it I want to check it out so on that plot alone I wanted to see midnight movie so uh, the new face of horror it's uh, promising so I don't know is it gonna stand up against you know the classic uh, Faces of horror? I don't know. I don't think so. It looks like just DVD case wise, it looks like it's one of those cheesy low budget um, trying to target the horror genre audience where they're like, if it's cheap and it's a horror film I've never seen and it's like, you know, blood gore, whatever, crazy or whatever, you know, they, it's just, you know, is it a crash grab? Is it a cash grab or is it an actually good horror film? I don't know. I'm going to find out. It just, you know, looking from this, I'm like, I don't expect that much, but I don't know. Time to find out. Well, I just watched Midnight Movie. Such a plain title, but, you know, Midnight Movie, it matches the thing of the movie. But anyways, it was a surprisingly good movie. Like, it's nothing spectacular for the horror genre. It's nothing amazing or stands out as much. But, you know, it was, it was a good film. Um, it was definitely a little bit memorable. Just, despite it, you know, it's sort of like a, the fake film within the film is like almost like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but like its own style. And it's like, it's, it's it's a very it's just a it's just a good film that's <laughs> that's what it is I, I don't know if anyone else has ever heard of it midnight movie yeah it's a good film um i i'm i really like i love, really like disaster films i really like uh movies about movies and this is a horror movie about horror movie them are watching a horror movie and you know the horror movie comes to life and starts killing them and, it's it's a good film um, done well and you know throughout the whole thing you don't really notice the low budget nature of the film everything was just you know done right um, I assume it's a low budget film but yeah yeah it was good uh, you like horror definitely one of the ones I would recommend um, you know, I picked it up for like two bucks, so I assume it's around that price elsewhere. If you can find a copy, if you, you know, if you're interested in the film, I definitely recommend watching it. It's, it's, I thought it was good. Um, yeah, just get, like, even just the opening scene just, just really gets you into the film. And then, you know, the core cliches and all that, and it's like, it was just, it was, I thought it was well done, so... Anyways, now, next up, a movie I've heard about. I remember when this was released, it made a bit of a splash. Uh, I'm going to attempt to watch Splice. Not sure what to expect. I think it's a sci-fi uh, alien movie. I'm not sure. Uh, I remember the trailers a bit. Um, Adrian Brody's in it, and that's really all I remember. It was, I remember... 
hearing it was good, but I'm not sure. I'm going to find out. Here I go. Time to watch Splice. I just watched Splice. It was good. It's not just good, it was great. It wasn't great, it was amazing. Uh, this has to be one of the... One of the best modern day creature features I've ever seen. Um, yeah, really well done. Um, it's not a total horror film, so it like it did surprise me where the plot went and what the story truly was. Uh, back then, I remember seeing the trailer and I thought it was just a pure horror film, you know. But there was a lot more than meets the eye in Spice. I can definitely see why people were, you know, talking about it back then when it was released and all that. Uh, really well done. Um, great, great script, great acting. It just is such a good modern day creature feature. That's it's really well done. I don't know what else to say. It's just, yeah, really well done. Um, I think for some people, the last, it's sort of, the last 30 minutes might be like, I don't know, not deal breaker, but like, it's either by the end of it, you'll either love it or hate it, sort of type movie, so, um, I think it was really well done. I think the whole, like the ending, not spoiling anything, but it's just to me, at first I thought the way they went with the ending or started to go with the ending last 10 minutes, I was like, why is it sort of going in this direction? But you know what, overall looking back on it, I'm like, yeah, I, to me it made sense and it wasn't, it didn't stick out as much as I thought while watching it so I you know what I liked it very unique very memorable um, I mean well edited uh, well shot uh, it just really well done um, opening credits really well done I really like the opening credits um, I didn't realize they were using two different sort of font type ways of showing the credits like you had the whole production studio and that in one font and then you had the cast in a different font and I'm like I didn't actually notice <laughs> like I noticed that they were going back and forth between it but it's just it was edited so well it just it was seamless uh, really well done um, what else do I want to say I also noticed, credit-wise, uh, Gil, Gil de Toro, Gillian, Gillian de Toro, Gil, Gil, Gil de Toro, I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name, um, but he's produced to this, so I, I knew right there, opening credit-wise, I'm like, um, this is the, this is gonna be really well done in terms of the creature side, makeup and, uh, special effects, and, yeah, really well done. Definitely recommend checking it out if you haven't seen it. Um, if you like creature feature type things, or um, or even just horror in general, like it's don't go into it expecting you know. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that compares this movie to. Don't expecting like you know blood guts, people dying everywhere type movie. So uh, expect. You know, a creature feature with a little more deep subtext and script and all that. So, really, really well done. Anyways, next up is a personal uh, favorite in terms of uh, expectation. I have a really high expectation for this next film. Yeah, it's They Live. John Carpenter's They Live. Um, I'm super excited to watch this movie. I'm actually afraid my excitement's a little too high. I'm afraid I might be uh, overdoing it. I hope not. I'm trying to go into it without with an open mind and low expectations so that way I can get blown away. Um, because I really loved The Thing, which was the first John Carpenter movie I ever saw. I saw that as part of the first marathon 
um, that I had. And then the second marathon, actually no, I don't think I have saw any other John Carpenter films. No, second marathon I saw um, Village of the Damned, which I really liked. Um, not as good as it probably could have been, but it was just really iconic and I, I thought it was done well. I definitely want to check out the original, but uh, I'm trying to remember what else. I also saw Body Bags that year, the second year, last year, and I also, uh, which I liked. Um, second story wasn't that great because it was an anthology. The first and third one were really the best, and it was uh, second one, and eh, not so much. That one and Prince of Darkness. I loved Prince of Darkness. Prince of, Prince of Darkness was so good <laughs> uh just like musically and all that and 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 just overall the feeling of the whole atmosphere of it I, I just i just really liked prince of darkness um so i really love john carpenter stuff um from what i've seen oh yeah and halloween i forgot i watched that one during the first uh the first marathon i saw all the halloweens i totally forgot that Halloween was John Carpenter as well. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Uh, so I'm super excited for They Live. Um, uh, it was awesome because when I opened up the Steelbook or whatever in my unboxing video, there was a line in it. I'm, all, I'm here to kick ass and chew bubblegum and I'm all out of bubblegum. I didn't realize that line was in that movie so I, I that's that line I, I'm expecting I'm expecting it's gonna be a badass movie like really awesome that's what I'm expecting uh, it's hard not to expect greatness uh, I, I think I might have built it up too much <sighs> we'll find out anyways time to watch they live well I just watched they live it was great it was just a great film beginning to end uh, entertaining action. Um, once again, John Carpenter's music uh, is great. Yeah, I just thought it was very, very neat in the way they chose to do black and white and the use of it and all that. The the actual alien makeup uh, kind of looked a little bit cheesy. Um, but I think that sort of worked with the way they did the black and white because with the glasses you can always see them with black and white. So um, when it's in black and white, it actually looks like one of those uh, old UFO type movies like uh, The Day the Earth Stood Still and all that with the you know sort of cheesy effects and that. But I so I think in that sense it really worked. Um, yeah, it was <laughs> really good. I, I enjoyed it. Some surprising moments in the film. Um, yeah, just really, really, really well done. Um, yeah, there's some really well done surprises in this film that I wasn't expecting. Even the setup and everything, I, it's like I wasn't expecting it, and then it's like it happens, and I'm like, wow, um, I can't believe they did that sort of thing. And uh, it was some really unexpected moments. Because like, usually, in movies and that, you know, they would set something up, you would sort of tell when it's just a, something's about to happen, and, and the surprises, it's like, I wasn't expecting anything to happen, I thought this was going to be a slow scene, and then all of a sudden, boom, you're just thrown into <laughs> the next part of it and all that, so it's, yeah, it's a really good film, really good, really great, I enjoyed it. I don't know, I just like, I just really like the whole premise of this film, so, um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> I don't know how much more I can just praise it, uh, but, oh, uh, yeah, that ending, not spoiling it, but that ending clip, um, I definitely wasn't expecting, um, <laughs> what a way to end a film, I'll say that, with that last, uh, scene, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I would definitely, if, you, if you've seen any of other John Carpenter films and never saw They Live, go see it. Uh, really great. Anyways, next up, uh, we got a double feature 
uh, white noise and white noise 2. Now, really, all I, I, I remember seeing the trailer for white noise. Something to do with uh, someone's, uh, someone has a dead wife or something like that, and it's like haunting through the noise and the television and all that or something like that. I don't know. I haven't really read it up. Um, that's just what I got, I think, from the trailers a long time ago when I did see the trailers. But, you know, the main poll here is the first one has Michael Keaton in it. The second one has Nathan Fillion. So, I'm excited just because <laughs> those two cast members are in the first and second one. So, uh, I mean, they're not in both, it looks like. It just looks like one's in the, Ma Michael Keane's in the first one, Nathan Fillion's in the second one. So, I'm excited. That's all I have to say. Uh, time to watch uh, White Noise. Well, I just watched White Noise, the first one, and um, it was good. It was interesting. Um, really, actually, surprisingly, the best thing, I, 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 or most surprising thing, was because judging from the premise and all that, it's like it's so easy that this movie could jump scare or just purposely throw shit at the camera just to scare you uh, cheaply. And I applaud it because it didn't actually do that. Like, there was one or two moments where it does that, but it's like, it's overall was more about the suspense and build up and how they did it. They did it really well in the sense that it wasn't cheaply trying to scare you. It wasn't trying to cash in. It seemed like the movie was trying to do more than, more than just scare you, you know, and bring you in with the mystery mystery of it and all that. And I, I think it was a good, overall, a good job. Uh, surprisingly, premise-wise, you think it would sort of run out of steam, but, you know, the mystery kind of kind of made you hang in on there and where it was going to go and you were trying to figure out, oh, how is this going to end? What are they going to do next? And, yeah, it was good. It, it kept me in. Um, it was well, like, the cinematography was really well done. Um... Uh, which is surprising because it didn't have to be really well done, but it was just just everything that they they did to convey what was happening really well done. Surprisingly, most surprisingly, over all the surprises is the music, the score. The actual score was surprisingly good. It was just like it's like a soft piano type thing, which is something I wouldn't expect from this type of film or. If I remember seeing the trailers a long time ago, um, it didn't seem like this would be kind of that slow-paced type movie, and you know, it was it, it was good. Uh, second one uh, it should be interesting to see where it goes. Um, I'm wondering if I don't know. I'm gonna find out how the second one is. Time to watch White Noise Two. White Noise Harder. What was the name of the sequel? It was like The Light? I think it's called The Light. White Noise 2, The Light. <laughs> really weird title for a sequel. Anyways, time to watch it. I just watched White Noise 2, uh, The Light. Stupid. <laughs> How to make a stupid sequel. Um, See, it, it would have been, it would have been an okay, or maybe even decent sequel. But the thing that really screwed it up, um, I gotta say, is the introduction of the plot point that if you save a life, three days later, they will kill people. <laughs> Like, a, I mean, you always wonder, it's like, if you save a life, um, would they accidentally kill people, you know, an accident or whatever, will they cause more problems later on? Now, that's an interesting thing to explore, but not for this franchise. What the first movie did, and then to do it the second one for that, um, I, re I felt it was really bad. It's, I mean, <laughs> 
They even they threw out the whatever those free mysterious bad things from the first one is. They got rid of that, and then uh, they simplified everything, so he doesn't really need a machine to get to see the um, thing. It's just a lot of bad choices, and they so they all add up. And even though some of it was very interesting and memorable in the sense of uh, him saving people and stuff like that, and the specific setups and all that, but it's just, I, I think it was really stupid, especially near the ending, I mean, and the ghosts throughout it, it's like, you can't even tell if they're helping or not, like, we, like, in the first one, it's like, there was, they could be helping or they could be bad, some of them are bad, some of them are good, and so, it was a very interesting line in between them, and then the second one, it's like, it's like, they weren't helping, or, they, like, they weren't, helping they were <laughs> it was just back and forth it was just every time one appeared on screen jump screen or whatever it was just a i think it was like an f u to the um the character because he's like i'm trying to deal with all these problems and then you got these things jumping up at me every now and then scaring me um yeah just really stupid it would it would have been an okay sequel but it just it went it went so stupid especially the last bit with the ambulance was just it was friggin ridiculous it was a ridiculous way uh to end it absolutely um yeah anyways moving on from that crap uh next up i'm watching poltergeist 2 now it should be interesting because i watched poltergeist the first one for the first time in uh, the first marathon I ever had, and it was one of the best of the movies I watched that year. Um, I just, the cinematography for the first one was ridiculously amazing. Like, holy crap. Uh, I mean, it just, the whole movie was actually really well done, amazing, and it just, it, it was just a, overall a really good film crazy good ending I like it just I really liked and enjoyed the first poltergeist movie poltergeist movie pronounced poltergeist right but anyways so I'm interested to see what the sequels do I don't think yeah Steven Spielberg is not really involved in it I don't so just glancing at the credit thing but um uh, I'm very interested to see where it goes because I'm watching Poltergeist 2 and then afterwards I'm going to be watching Poltergeist 3 for the first time. So, um, let's find out if it's good. Time to watch Poltergeist 2. The Other Side. I just watched Poltergeist 2, The Other Side. And, you know what? It definitely kept the look of the original film cinematography and all that it, it just matches the first one it definitely felt like it was part of the first one so this definitely felt like it was the second part and story-wise was a very interesting add-on to and it was very interesting where it went with the whole uh the group that was underground of where they for were in the first movie but it was just overall it was very interesting cast the the old man i don't know who he is actor wise or whatever but he is really creepy really 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 like really good uh i don't think there could have been a better casting for that character than the actor who did play him pretty decent overall um a couple of really good uh, moments, just like in, it's really neat what originality they come up with to, you know, because in the first one you got, you know, got some classic moments like the mirror scene, um, uh, and the, uh, oh, and the, the doll and all that. <laughs> so it's just interesting to see this one and see what else they come with, up with. And this one had a couple good moments like the, uh, the braces scene with the braces like that is just cool effects and all that um the ending a little bit overkill with the special effects and all um
But at the very least, it's nice to look at as crazy over top green screen or blue screen or whatever it was. Um, it's funny because with the HD, you know, Blu-ray uh, re re resolution of it, you can, like in the very first scene of the movie, you can really, you can tell where the box of the special effects, uh, like the mask of where it ends, because there's like a line down and across, like it's a square, like the smoke is coming over the stars, and you can see the square of where the effect ends. <laughs> uh, I just, I thought that was a really neat sort of thing to pick up on. I don't know how noticeable it was in feeders, but on the Blu-ray it's really noticeable. Overall, it was okay. It was decent. You know, it could have been a lot worse sequel-wise, and this one just felt it was... It felt like it was just a little add-on to the original. It didn't match the original or anything like that. It just it felt like it was a little add-on additional thing if you want to watch. That's what it really felt like. So, I mean, the first one they ended it, and the second one now they ended it again. So, uh, where the, what the hell is going to happen in the third one? Like, literally, I'm not sure. Like, I'm just looking at it, and it looks like, just judging cover, not reading it, but it looks like it, they're going to the city. So, it should be interesting to see what exciting poltergeist things they do in the city this movie hopefully the whole thing takes place in the city so it would be very interesting to see what they do special effects and horror wise for the third one um hopefully it's a good continuation um usually for horror films if it's the second one that's not bad it's the third one <laughs> or and if it's not the third one it's the fourth one if it's the fourth one it's the fourth <laughs> anyways so, time to watch Poltergeist Free. Uh, no other title, so it's not the other side. It's just Poltergeist Free. I guess at this point they were like, we're going to just make the sequel. Let's just name it Poltergeist Free. So, time to watch. Well, I just watched Poltergeist Free. Uh, seemed quite pointless uh, of a sequel. I mean, just overall, just very loosely connected to the first two, other than... Uh, the creepy villain guy from the second one that was introduced in the second one, and uh, it's just following her because the family moved all the or not moved, but the family uh, dropped them off at nephews and other relations, and it's like New York uh, or Chicago. I have no idea. It's some sort of city. It, they I don't think they mentioned it, but. Uh, <sighs> worse than the second one definitely um it wasn't even shot the same i don't think i don't think it was shot the same like there was a noticeable difference in quality uh, cinematography wise and the third one really didn't offer much in terms of special effects um i mean there was a couple good mirror scenes and all that but then they started using the mirror scenes throughout the whole film so once you see it the first couple of times the other half of the time you're seeing it, you're just like, um, show us something different. <laughs> so, and I think there was like one, one really good special effects scene. Um, but the rest of it was just, eh, meh. So, uh, yeah, if you like the first two, check it out just to see what they did for the third one. But, uh, other than that, do, would I really recommend it? Not really. Anyways, that's enough with that. Next up, uh, we got two modern day, uh, well, Piranha series remake. I, I remember, I think this was a remake of an older one. Um, and it's just, you know, it's time to have some fun with our horror. Time to, for, I think these films, like, I, I remember seeing the trailers when they were released, it's like, they knew it was going to be a bad movie, but they were like, let's make it all out bad, and I don't know, I, 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 I think, I hopefully will have fun with these movies, uh, but I don't know, I didn't pay two for twenty for them, um, I paid like a dollar or two, 
Uh, yeah, I think it was a dollar each. It was the last day of uh, HMV was closing in Toronto, and it was a dollar each. So I'm like, for a dollar, you know what, I'll pick it up. It doesn't come with the 3D version, but, you know, for a dollar, I'm not really complaining. So, anyways... Time to watch Priya, Piranha, Priyana, Piranha, Piranha. Time to watch Piranha. I just watched Piranha, uh, or also known as Piranha 3D. Well, not in 3D that I watched it, but anyways, somewhat entertaining. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, <laughs> really gory. Uh, real lots of nudity. Like rated R. It's like. <laughs> You kind of knew what you were getting into watching it. It's like Jaws Gone Wild, and you know, I thought I thought it was good. I enjoyed it. <laughs> um, I am shocked Richard Dreyfuss was in this film. Yeah, it wasn't as over the top as I was imagining it was going to be, but then again. Um, it did have one of the most bloodiest sea, sea bl most bloodiest water scene I think I've ever seen in a film. Uh, I was kind of hoping it would be a little more over the top, but um, I don't have to worry because I'm sure the second one will fill my needs <laughs> for it being even more over the top. So, but for what this was, it was a fun. It was a fun hour and a half. Yeah, it was. It was quite short. Um, but, uh, that ending scene, or not ending scene, but the last shot, that completely made my day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, next up, Piranha Double D, or Piranha DD, or as I like to call it, Piranha Free DD, because the first one was Piranha Free D, so... Brought a free DD for the sequel. Um, I remember the trailer. I know David Hasselhoff's in this movie, and it's gonna be over the top. I'm hoping even more. I, I wanted to see. I want to see if it'll um, outdo the original. So time to watch uh, Piranha Double D. Well, I had a feeling that Piranha DD will satisfy my. <laughs> I had a feeling, I had a feeling Piranha D, D will be, I had a feeling Piranha Free Double D would satisfy the need for over the top bloody action. Um, it did, it didn't have as much blood or as much nudity as the first one, but what it made up for with that is they made up it in the craziness of the script and the craziness of what they did do with it so um totally over the top it was actually even shorter than the first one uh but the first one i think had a better ending um than this one but you know and the cameos were kind of <laughs> stupidly funny and all that so yeah if you like the first one definitely would like the second one so anyways moving on Next up, I got Cat's Eye and Salem's Lot, two Stephen King movies. But I'm going to start off with Cat's Eye. Um, I've already seen The Shining, um, and the main reason I got this collection thing, because I don't normally like getting these cash grab collection ones, is uh, the only reason I got it is for Cat's Eye, Salem's Lot, and It. And I'm saving the original It for my last movie for this marathon. Because I figured, you know, so many people talked about it. And with the new one that just came out in theaters, I'm like, now would be a good time to end it with It. But for now, right now, I'm doing Cat's Eyes first. Or cat, Cat's Eye first. And then Salem Lot. So... And then much later on, I'll do it. So, what am I expecting from this film? Um, I don't know anything about it. 
about Cat's Eye. I just know it's an anthology film. So, I think this is going to be the first Stephen King anthology film that I've seen. Because I don't remember any of the other ones that he's done that's actually an anthology. All, all the other Stephen King movies I've seen are the full, like, there's no... None that I can think of that's anthology wise, so I don't know. Is this the only anthology film for Stanley, or uh, almost said Stanley Cooper, for Stephen King? Yeah, I've, I've no expectations, so time to watch Cat's Eye. I just watched Stephen King's Cat Eye. Cat's Eye. And it is the best anthology film I have ever seen better than body bags is better than um uh, abc's of death one and two it's like i haven't really seen a lot of anthology films but this one's the best um oh my gosh i loved it from beginning to end and, and it had me worried for uh, because well first of all main credits uh, opening credit scene it you start following the story of the cat and I fell in love with that story, and then it's like, and then you go to the first major story, which was the non-smoking one, the quit smoking one, and I was like, I I really love the whole setup and execution of the first and the second story, um, uh, the smoking and one, and then it went into the, um, the gambling one, uh, both really well executed. Oh my gosh, it's so well done. Um, I loved it. I absolutely loved Cat's Eye. Um, uh, just everything about it, like, and I was worried because the first one was really good. And actually, I really loved that story. I wanted it to continue. That was that's the thing. I I wanted more. I wanted to see more of that story and where it went after that, but <laughs> it didn't. It's unfortunate, but but it's good because you know it. <laughs> it didn't show too much. It just you know it made me. It showed enough that got me into the story and I was hooked into it. But anyways, um, that was my only little complaint. Is I really wanted to see the complete story of the first first one. But anyways. Um, and then the second one happened, and I really loved that story with the whole, um, well, first of all, it, it started off with, you know, they're betting on the cat to see if it, it will live by crossing the street or will it die, and, and then it goes from that to, like, it made sense. Everything in this, I, I really loved how, even though it's a little bit of a stretch that the cat would go through each story but it just it's done so well and it's done in such a way that it's like it makes sense in general and it, it just it's <laughs> I thought it was really good I I was shocked how good this thing is and I, I went into it expecting enough well I didn't know what to expect and I, wow I, I loved it absolutely loved it I can't praise this enough and then yeah, so at at the end of the second story, I was worried because I'm like, usually in an anthology film, there's always one story where it's like you don't like it or it's not as good as the other ones and that. And I was a bit worried going into the third story, but by the end of it, it was so good. <laughs> like, just the whole thing was good. I really enjoyed it. Um cast was great um i was surprised i was shocked uh robert hayes um I, I i the only movie i've seen him in is is airplane like and to see him in a role that isn't airplane i'm like i was shocked generally um everyone else did a really great job but oh man the music choices everything the score the music um, they even wrote a theme song, Cat's Eye, I think, for this, for this, for this movie, and I think, I don't know, either that or there's a song named Cat's Eye, um, but, <laughs> a really catchy song, um, I liked the score, it was, as well, um, the, 
person who did the score, I believe, is the same person who did the score to um, the Avengers and and Forrest Gump. Uh, I think. Don't quote me on that. Anyways. Really well done. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I'm. I'm. This movie is competing. It might be. It might be competing with The Shining for for best, my most favorite Stephen King adaptation. I'm not gonna lie. Um. Oh man, it was just. I loved it. Uh, the third one, third story wise, I just had to point out the special effects. In I'm shocked. I've never seen. I, because I, I knew the effects they were using to make the small guy seem like, you know, he's moving around the bedroom and that. But I've never seen it pulled off that well. Like, even though I can tell when it's a screen and green screen and when it's uh, miniature and, and not miniature, but like over the set is like life size version of the small corner. And, um,. I'm just amazed how well it actually works. The illusion works so well, and the, that critter in the third one seems so realistic because of the way they decided to go around filming that. And the, oh man, amazing. Loved it. I gotta stop praising it because uh, <laughs> I have to move on to the next film. As you can see, at this point, I'm a little bit tired because I think I've watched. I don't know how many films I watched today. <laughs> It's now like 3 o'clock in the morning, and I have to get through Salem's Lot. That's the next one on my list. Stephen King's Salem's Lot. Um, I think it's I think it's like a two-part, like It, because I know It's divided into two parts. I think Salem's Lot is divided into two parts, but I could be mistaken. Um, but I'm going to do my best to get through that and then move on to the next film and the next film. And <laughs> okay, anyways... Um, expectations uh who's directing salem's lot i think i think it's the same director uh he passed away recently um the guy who did the original texas chainsaw massacre i could be mistaken on that um but uh, what's the name tobe tobe hooper tobe tobe hooper i think is his name could be mistaken on that, but, um, sorry if I got your name wrong, but, um, yeah, he did, he directed, I believe he directed Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Poltergeist. I could be mistaken on that. Let me know down in the comments how wrong I am. Anyways, um, so my expectations is it's gonna be good, question mark? <laughs> I think it has something to do with vampires, uh, plot-wise, but I'm not sure. Salem's Lot. Um, wasn't Salem's Lot the first Stephen King book? I'm not sure. I absolutely, I can't remember. Was it the first one to get published? I have no idea. I'm not, <laughs> I haven't read the book. I haven't, um, I think, I don't know, for some reason I have that planted in my mind. Anyways, time to watch Salem's Lot. Oh, I'm so tired. I just watched Salem's Lot. Um, very interesting. Um, you could tell it was made for TV. Um, with the commercial style breaks and, um, a little bit of it, a little bit of it was a little bit cheesy. Um, Interesting special effects. Um, yeah, I was right. It was about vampires. Um, yeah, it's it's very interesting uh, adaptation and very interesting story overall. Um, yeah. Next up is. Uh, well, it's like 6 o'clock in the morning, so I'm just going to take like a two-hour break, and then I'm going to probably resume it. Um, but when I resume, it's going to be Slither. And, uh, Slither, yeah, woo. Uh, Nathan Fillion's in it, and Michael Rooker, and James Gunn directed it.
So, I'm interested. Don't know anything else, except that probably involves, it's probably a very gross movie, like there's like worms or whatever those things are, so, uh, it should be interesting, uh, especially the fact, you know, James Gunn directed it, so I'm just, all I know him for is Guardians of the Galaxy, and that's like he started off with a horror film, so it should be interesting to watch, okay. I just watched, <laughs> I just watched Sliver. And it was, uh, it was interesting. Decent. You know. Had a, had a couple fun moments, but, uh, nothing, uh, eh. Couple memorable bits, but, you know, it's just overall, it was just more interesting to watch. Especially the fact that James Gunn, he did the Guardians of the Galaxy, so... So, I, I think this is his first film. I could be mistaken. Please correct me on that if I'm wrong. Um, but I'm under the impression this was one of his earlier films, if not his first uh, feature film. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. And it's you can easily see, uh, music choice-wise, he, uh, he has really great cho <laughs> really great choice of songs and music. <laughs> I have nothing really else to add. Moving on. Uh, buh, buh, buh. Next up is Phantom of the Opera with Robert England. Um, I really love the whole Phantom of the Opera. Um, just story in general. I just really like it. Um, and so I, I love the musical and I, I love Phantom of the Paradise. Um, so I'm trying to find all the rest of all the rest of the adaptations ever for Phantom of the Opera, and, uh, this one has Robert England as, I hope I'm saying that name right, as, fan, as the Phantom, so, I'm excited, I mean, he's best known for playing Freddy Krueger in Nightmare on Elm Street, and I love that series, so, I can't wait to see what he does to the role of Phantom, and I'm just wonder just how, um, horror this is. I mean, I know for a fact it's going to be probably, it's probably not going to be anywhere close to the musical, so I'm expecting it might be something new story-wise, or maybe it'll be more closer to the, um, uh, the original Phantom of the Opera, but just more modern and more horror, more gore. Expectations, hopefully it'll be good. I hope I know, uh, and, uh, and I also hope I enjoy it. Time to watch Phantom of the Opera. I just watched Phantom of the Opera. The Robert, Robert England, uh, England, uh, sorry, once again, I'll pronounce the name. Uh, I butcher names for a living. Anyways, I liked it. You know? It was kind of good, kind of bad. It was just in between. It's that nice off spot between good and bad. In the very beginning, it starts off in New York, modern day New York. So I, I was, I kind of in that opening title, I, my expectation was awesome. This is going to be a modern version of Phantom of the Opera. Ah, but then it, they transition it back to the old 1800th century or whatever. And then I'm like, wow, just when I thought it was going to be original. <laughs> I will praise the movie, though, music-wise, just in the sense that, um, because around the time this movie came out, there was a very popular stage production, Andrew Lloyd Webber's Phantom of the Opera. So, for a movie to try to actually do good music for it and actually incorporate it into the plot and all that and actually make try to make attempt to make the music memorable um deserves some praise especially the fact that the way they used it especially near the end they tried to be like oh this is the theme to our phantom of the opera and it's recognizable and or it should be that's the way they act like it in the film but the music is actually just above bland, it's it's decent, like, 
uh, but nothing as me nowhere near as memorable as you know Phantom of the Opera, the Andrew Lloyd Webber uh, music. So, and also I found it funny at, at the end credits, the very end credits. It's like, oh, this movie has no relation to any current film production or current production or stage production of a musical with the same name or something like that. It just it kind of made me laugh. Robert England. Nothing special performance-wise. Um, he actually, funny funny enough, with the makeup, whenever he had the makeup at all, um, he actually reminded me of uh, Matt Smith for some reason. Like, every time his character, his portrayal of the Phantom, it reminded me of, like, a Matt Smith, but with, like, heavy makeup. So I, I just thought that was a little bit funny, and I, I couldn't get that out of my head the entire time. Killing... Not so much. It is the killings are a lot more gruesome than than the musical. So, uh, if you want to see a slightly more edgier uh, in the sense of killing and stuff and horror, then yeah, this is stepping stone. Hopefully, someday I'll find the other Phantom of the Opera movie where it's a horror film, but it's I think it's slightly more horror than this. This is sort of like the in between. So, hopefully, someday I'll find that version of Phantom of the Opera. But anyways. Moving on, next up we got a uh, classic in horror. Um, I've heard about this film so much without spoilers or anything, so I'm, I'm going to be probably pleasantly surprised by this. Uh, American Psycho. Well, I just discovered my, my disc for American Psycho, which I've never watched yet. Um, when I went to put in the disc, it's there, it can't read it and I'm looking at the back of it and there's cracks along the middle of it so the disc is broken and I have no way of watching American Psycho because I checked on Netflix and Netflix doesn't have it on their library you know the one time I need you Netflix is the one time you don't deliver uh, why am I even subscribed to you oh yeah that's right your original content so I'm a little pissed because I was super excited to watch uh, American Psycho. Uh, so I'm going to have to move on to the next one, which is Lawnmower Man. Now, because I, I didn't know anything about this film, uh, except that Pierce Brosnan and Jeff Fahey is in it. Fahey? Sorry if I put your name. Um, that's all I knew. And it was a little bit sci-fi horror, I guess. I think. I'm not entirely sure. But um, he let me know that apparently this, uh, the production for this was in a lawsuit or something um, against, well, Stephen King. Well, Stephen King uh, apparently wrote a book, something to do with Lawnmower Man. And so he sued the production for making a movie called Lawnmower Man with a similar plot. So, um, or something similar between the movie and his book. So this movie's technically kind of Stephen King related so um, now this comes down to the major thing should I watch the theatrical cut or director's cut um, I'm gonna have to look online without trying with spoilers to see what is the best version of the film I have decided um, I haven't had anything spoiled for me yet I've decided to go watch the director's cut of the lawnmower I just watched the Lawnmower Man director's cut, and it was bizarrely interesting. Like very interesting movie from beginning to end. Um, even though the special effects for the computer section of things is really outdated especially when you compare it to today's graphics which we take for granted um, it's even if you take into account even with the outdated vi virtual reality graphics the movie kind of still works like if you go into it knowing you know, this movie came out, I think, 80s? 1992? Oh, okay. My mistake. I thought this movie was 80s. Wow. <laughs> I thought this movie came out in the 80s. 
1992, apparently. Um, wow, okay. 1992, yeah. Yeah, because I don't think the 80s would have graphics that good. I don't know. Anyways. Yeah, I definitely, it's, it's just a really cool movie overall. Um, the Stephen King um, influences or the uh, writing definitely, um, you can definitely tell it's like, it just from watching a whole bunch of Stephen King movies, it's like, you could, I sort of picked up on the moments and parts, so I'm like, I'm like, yeah, that's so, that's such a Stephen King type thing and all that. So I thought that was really cool. Um, they made reference to the shop, which was the, the organization it, and that was evil in Firestarter. So I, I think that's also cool. So <laughs> I, I liked it. I strangely like this movie, yeah. It was kind of interesting director's cut because um, they even said at the beginning of the film that they showed a title card saying that certain, the footage, the newly put in footage, um, you can tell there's like a jump cut and you can tell a difference in the quality and stuff. Um, I thought that was very, like, I sometimes I didn't really notice it, but other times I did notice it, and I just thought it was very interesting. It made a very interesting viewing, especially on a first viewing, because you're like, oh, I guess this was a little bit of a deleted scene and stuff like that, but um, I think the all the added footage and all the, like, the movie overall, I thought worked as the director's cut. Um, I would definitely be interested to see the theatrical cut, just to see um, if the movie still works as a theatrical cut. Um, but that would be, I would be definitely interested in checking it out. Anyways, you know, The Lawnmower Man didn't really have a lot of horror to it. It felt like the whole movie was like 5-6% horror um, out of the whole thing. So, time to step up the game with the editor. Um, yeah, I have no idea what to expect with the editor. Uh, this is not the Scream, Scream Factory version of the movie. This is the uh, the Canadian version of this movie. It was it's done by the release was done by uh, Raven Banner. I'm still trying to find the Scream Factory version of this film, but uh, you know I I saw the trailer for it and I was like I have to get this film. It's a film about filmmaking, so you could see right there I really wanted to get it and um, yeah it's it's called the editor and it's I guess in the style of those like Italian like I don't know was it grindhouse or like it's like really like pulp films and trash pictures I'm, I'm not as familiar with that style of genre of film um, but um, yeah it's I'm very interested in seeing what's going to happen in this film. Um, I think it's something to do with an editor, and the editor is like the killer, and he edits the kills or something like that. So um, I don't know. Um, I'm kind of really excited to see this because it's a it's a newer movie, but done in the style of the older older films, just like how Grindhouse was a newer film in the style of the older films and stuff like that. So it. Uh, I hope it's going to be a bloody good time for all. <laughs> Anyways, time to watch The Editor. Well, I just watched The Editor, and it was... It was a very interesting film. <laughs> well done, in the sense of uh, really bad. You know, because it's in the style of... Uh, Apparently, uh, pulp and trash films of the, like, 60s or 70s or whatever, but, or around that time or whatever, but, yeah, <laughs> it's just a very interesting film overall. Blood, sex, everything, uh, everything you need in a horror film. It was kind of funny, had some, had some good, because, uh, I, 
there was some really funny moments just in editing wise in the sense of um, the uh, making fun of the films of the older like the kind that they were kind of doing the style of so it was a uh, really funny uh, had some really funny moments like uh, the cigarette <laughs> the film change um, cigarette thing or whatever that that I thought was really funny and the <laughs> ending and it is eh, it was good it was bad good it was the best kind of bad good <laughs> i just want to point out the music in uh, i really love the music that was in the editor i really love that soundtrack the whole it, it gave off a little bit of a 80s you know john carpenter 70s you know it was, it was really it was really, I really like that soundtrack. I'm definitely going to try and pick that up. After watching so many horror films in a row, it just, everything's starting to blur together and nothing, nothing goes. Anyways, um, moving on. Next up is, uh, the, one of the ones from last year, which I didn't get around to actually watching because there was a couple films last year that I didn't get a chance to watch. Um, so I only watched, like, 28 out of the 31 films or something like that so this year I made up for it uh, brought it back is Invasion of the Body Snatchers I was supposed to watch this last year but uh, it's a remake because uh, there was one, there was an earlier one of this this is the the was it 80s yeah 78 so it was just before the 80s <laughs> so it's actually earlier than I thought um, yeah should be I I don't really know how it ends or whatever. I think I've. I, I don't know if the ending's been spoiled for me because I. I think I've. I think I know what the ending shot is, but I'm not sure. I'm gonna watch it and see if if I'm right or wrong. But um, uh, I mean the cast alone is really the main reason to watch this. I mean you got um, Donald Sutherland, Jeff Goldblum, and Leonard Nimoy. Like. Ah. Uh, I, I never would expect that cast to be in a movie together, let alone one that's horror related, so I'm super excited to watch this. Time to watch Invasion of the Body Snatchers. I just watched Invasion of the Body Snatchers. 1978, you know, it's pretty good. I mean, there's a little bit of silly moments, uh, especially with an axe. <laughs> The axles fillers. My uh, cousin is here and he wants to watch as well. <laughs> he missed the first 20 minutes of the movie, but uh, the beginning, the first half of the movie is pretty slow, so it's very easy to catch up on. Um, but it did eventually pick it up for the second half of the film, and overall it was it was decent. It was decent, you know. Uh, wonder, I, it makes me wonder what the original was like, because this is not the first one, this is like, I believe this is the remake, and then, uh, years later in the 90s they did another remake, but, um, this one was, yeah, it was decent, you know? It was neat seeing, uh, Leonard Nimoy in a role that isn't Spock. <laughs> um, yeah. Time to move on to the next one. <laughs> okay, next up, we have... Return, or The Return of the Living Dead. Now, I have no idea what to expect with this movie. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out, I don't know, is this a sequel? I don't know. Because don't it, says, it says The Return of the Living Dead, so it sounds like it would be a sequel to something called The Living Dead, but I could be mistaken. Maybe this is There's its so own... Zombie maybe this is its own series. That's what it is. Um... Yeah, because I remember seeing the Return of the Living... Well, I haven't seen any of the Return of the Living Dead series, but uh, I remember seeing in stores there's a number two and number three for right. Return of the Living Dead. So maybe it's its own series. So I assume this is the first one. Yeah. So I'm a bit excited because, you know, I need a change of pace. We need some actual zombies thrown into this mix because I, I haven't had any zombies that are, like, actual zombies. I mean... Cell with Samuel Jackson, you had Stephen King's version of The Walking, 
uh, and then, you know, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. It kind of felt a bit like zombies, but they were like... <laughs> <laughs> so, it's time for some... Time for a bloody good film, hopefully. So, time to watch Return of the... The... I gotta remember the the. Time to watch The Return of the Living Dead. I just watched The Return of the Living Dead. Uh... Is fun, quite entertaining, um, straight to the point. <laughs> uh, just it's 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 a, it's a good zombie film. It's it's interesting. It has um, well, it's not interesting. It's it was good. It was well done. It has um, zombie film is simple and to the point. Funny, not really over the top, but it it. <laughs> Uh, just, it's pretty fun flick, just overall, I'm not gonna lie. I, I do like how they are like, oh, it's based on a true story, what you're about to see is true, which is, <laughs> you can tell is not, and uh, it's just, it's really funny, and um, that took me by surprise, and, and just, they, they're like, oh, have you, have you seen that movie, like, Night, or like, Night of the Living Dead, or like, the original zombie movies and they're like yeah well apparently that was based on a true story and they covered it up and they you know fake the movie or whatever but it was based on a true event or whatever and then <laughs> it's a crazy plot I, I like it um anyways uh i would definitely if you like zombies check it out absolutely uh, it was good nowhere near as good as like shauna dead or Really, the only other zombie movie I can think of off the top of the head that I saw is John Z. But anyways, this is the 80s, right? 85, yeah. <laughs> Decent for its time. It definitely, it definitely screams the 80s. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, time for the grand finale. The number 31 movie to watch is it. I got a balloon for you. <laughs> Don't you want a balloon? <laughs> Here we go. This is it. The original It with uh, Tim Curry. This I'm pretty excited for. Um, not gonna lie, I there's people who've seen this movie and you know couldn't sleep afterwards and all that. It caused nightmares when this came out and all that. And um, it's just. <laughs> I heard it's really good. Yeah, I haven't seen the newer one. I haven't seen this version, and <laughs> uh, is it gonna be as good as everyone is says? I'm a little bit hyped up, so is it gonna deliver? That's my question. Um, it came out in the early '90s, 1990, it says. So that's. Uh, is it gonna be good? I think it was made for TV, just like uh, Salem's Lot. Um, but uh, Salem's Lot was good. But you know, 1979, the age of it really did kind of show. So, ten years later, is this gonna be a really good Stephen King adaptation? I'm gonna find out for myself. So, time to watch. It. Three hours later. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time cards. I just watched Stephen King's It. And it was very good. It was great. Um, especially for a miniseries. Um, a hell of a lot better than Salem's Lot. That's really the only miniseries that's similar that I can compare it to. Both being three hours long. Um, but then again, Salem's Lot was done 10 years prior to it, so 1990s, 1980s, there's a gap. So, uh, 1990, very well done, especially for TV. Like, all the sections with the clown. Uh, <laughs> Tim Curry, absolutely amazing. Um, I can see why the accent is a little weird. But, um, it is in the Boston area, I think, so, um, because they did mention Boston at one point, so, um, the accent sort of 
does work, but um, I can see why some people uh, didn't like or said the accent was a little bit funny uh, for the clown Pennywise. But anyways, uh, yeah, very well done. Uh, some things are really well done in this film, absolutely. Um, a couple of things, um, minor things were not as done as well, but I can definitely see from the whole production why Stephen King's It uh, is such a, like, classic, such a, um, I can see <laughs> kids back then seeing this movie or, and actually being scared, uh, and stuff like that. I can see why people are scared of this movie, you know, like, when they, when they you know, first saw it back then, so, um, yeah, it's really well done. Uh, it's just, for me, personally, the the light part of it with the light, that was kind of, yeah, like when it first happened, majorly the light, I was like, that's not really that great. And sort of the ending fight scene with a, once once you know it's what it what it really is, it's not that scary or not that great. I don't know if I don't know if maybe that's what it is in the book or if that's just the TV budget of it, because it would have been probably scarier if it still was the clown. Spoilers, sorry, it's a spider. I mean, <laughs> some sort of weird spider. I don't know, but it's. That's that's why, you know, watching this, I'm thinking, I'm like, it, the new one, I haven't seen it, um, I'm gonna see it eventually, but, um, I definitely saw moments in this where I'm like, this sh should, this has the possibility of being updated, this has the possibility of being told even better, especially nowadays with technology and all that, um, so... Um, I'm a bit excited to see the remake, but uh, that'll be in another video. So anyways, well, thank you very much for watching. I want you to have a nice day or night or whatever time you watch this. Have a nice whatever. Um, wait a minute. American Psycho, the disc was broken on it. I didn't watch American Psycho for the first time. Oh my gosh, I've only watched 30, 30 films. I'm supposed to watch 31. What am I going to do? It was supposed to be the, the grand finale. It was, what, what, what can I possibly watch right after it? Oh, no. <laughs> I guess I'm going to go see it in theaters now. Oh, man. This is just in. I'm watching it. And you'll float too and all that jazz. I'm gonna watch it in feeders, the new one. Oh my gosh. Uh, well, I'm a little bit intimidated. I'm not gonna lie. Because the modern day horror films, they do, they're very, like, in terms of graphics and that, they can do almost anything. And a lot of the modern horrors usually rely on jump stare, jump scares and stuff, so, yeah, I am a little bit scared to go see the It, the new It movie, okay, there, it's on camera, this can haunt me until the day I die, all that jazz, Tim Curry as the clown was still pretty scary, but he wasn't like, you know, crap your pants type scary, it was just, in general, was creepy and scary, but, um, especially how they did it back then. Um, but nowadays you can do things so much more better and, and just, you know, I don't, I am, I don't know who's the actor who plays it in the new movie, but everything I've heard from other people, because I haven't really watched anyone else do a review, but just in general, I got the impression from, uh, people who in my life who has seen the movie and that they said it was very good. It was, it was scarier than the original. And, and it's just like you got people who've seen the original who were scared of it and that uh, and now them seeing the remake 
they're like, that was even more terrifying. So that's really good for a horror remake, if that's true. If it is actually just as good or better than the original, um, that is very rare in horror genre in general, especially for a remake. A remake in general is always low critically and audience-wise, but from what I've heard, it's great. It's good. It's amazing. So, mostly positive. And <laughs> I, I'll probably be scared. I'm not going to lie. Uh, so, I'm going to head off to the feeder now to go watch it. And they all float down here. So, I'll float too. <laughs> Fuck. I just watched Jigsaw! No, I'm just kidding. I went to the feeders and they were giving out these free posters for Jigsaw in IMAX. Really cool art. Uh, that's a franchise I need to I need to track down in order to watch all of them because I haven't seen any of them. So maybe for next year I'll get them or one of my future marathons I'll get that. But anyways, I just watched it. Remake. And it is good. Very good. Oh my gosh. Um, very well done. Um, I really loved the uh, changes because, you know, I just watched the other day the original version, uh, 90s version of it. And, you know, seeing that and then seeing the remake. Um, the remake definitely, definitely improved several aspects of it. Um, uh, the, don't get me wrong, the 90s one is still pretty much a classic of, especially with what they did with certain scenes and all that. Um, the, uh, the, the remake, it does fall a little bit into the territory of being too similar in certain aspects. Um, but it's overall, uh, really well done. Like, I think decision-wise with certain changes and it just, even the locations in that, Derry just overall feels much more in-depth and richer than it did in the entire thing. Cast, cast was pretty good. Um, I really did like the changes, uh, from the original because... I haven't really read the book, so I don't know which one's truer or what things are closer to the book. I can have a sense of the idea of what's different in that, but uh, this version, uh, I definitely liked it. I liked how it was in the late 80s, which is around the time the original came out, and um, yeah, the, it was the 80s when they're the younger ones. And, and this one doesn't have the whole, the older side of it when they're they're grown up after the events. Um, that, I am super excited for the sequel. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I, they have so many different ways they could do it. Um, they could just sort of go their own route and or are they going to make it as closer to the book or whatever i don't know I, I i don't know these things but you know i really enjoyed it um really looking forward to the sequel it did really well so i assume there's going to be a lot of budget thrown into the second one so the new it was uh you know it wasn't well for me it wasn't really terrifying but it was it was you know, I was interested in the story. I want to see where it goes. Some moments were really well done in the terms of just just what they decided to do with it. Uh, really, like, I, at first, for like the first maybe 30 minutes, it's not, not nothing was spectacularly memorable when it sort of felt like it's already been done, but... There is some new stuff, and when the new stuff happens, it's it's pretty like terrifying overall. 
Um, I wonder if they're going to do extended cut for Blu-ray or DVD. Um, just because it felt like there was some... there. I felt like there was a couple things that they, they might have cut or left on the cutting room floor. I don't know. But, yeah, I went into this movie without seeing any of the trailers. I did see little images and stuff um, beforehand, but I never actually saw the actual trailer from beginning to end. So, um, I, I liked it. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I don't know how much more I can just beat a dead horse on... Uh, just how uh, how good it is, but uh, I mean, I'm just trying to think now. Was there anything bad with it? I felt like because if you watched the review prior, the '90s version of it, um, it I didn't really like the whole light part. It just sort of felt like it was thrown together for like two scenes, uh, the light aspect of the it and. In this one, I felt like it was really well integrated. Like, it actually felt like it is a crucial part of the story and all that. Um, with early setups and a little bit of payoffs later on about uh, about the whole light thing aspect of it. And then also the whole um, you'll float too. Like, I felt like that line in like the 90s version, it was like... Uh, it was for the moment with the drain. It was like, you'll float too. He just said that at that moment. But then he started saying it throughout the whole film. And I didn't really like it because I didn't really understood why he kept saying the floating bit. But now in this version of it, by the end of it, I understood why he kept saying they all float down here and all that. Like, it actually... And there's various setups throughout that I think was really well done. Um, I am super excited for the sequel. I've already mentioned that so many times. <laughs> um, but yeah, I enjoyed the new It movie. Really well done. Um, just, just in the sense of a remake, it's really well done. Uh, as it by itself, it's it's pretty good just story overall. Um, Kid acting, I didn't really have a problem with. Um, really, the only other problem I, uh, the only, the only problem I had was there are certain moments where it's like this could have been done a little bit longer or took a little more time with. Uh, like for example, when it cuts to it, like it goes into the montage and the song uh, "Dear God" by um, I forget the artist, but I know the song is called "Dear God," and it goes into it. Uh, goes into the song and it's like you see the town and um, it sort of goes into a little montage but it just doesn't fully go into the montage it, like it just starts into it and then it, it's over and it's like what was the point of using that song at that moment without going really into that song with it so some little unfortunate things editing wise there so that's why I'm kind of hoping there's an extended cut or something um, but even then, uh, if there is an extended cut, there wouldn't, I don't think they would, you know, add to moments like that, so it's just kind of unfortunate. All the acting for all the, even the adults, um, I didn't recognize anyone, um, but they all did a really good job. Um, Pennywise, uh, I think he was played by Bill Skarsgård, I cannot pronounce your name, I'm sorry. Uh, I butcher names for a living. It's my job. I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, he... Uh, you know, I like the differences between the... I was going to say Terry Crews. Um, Tim Curry. I like the differences between the Tim Curry version and this version for Pennywise. Um, in the Tim Curry one, you can never tell if he's he's serious or he's joking. Um, this is sort of lost in this version of it. It's sort of, you can tell he's, he's like he's trying to play it a little more friendlier. It's a more subtle performance where the Tim Curry one was a little more just totally out there, uh, type performance. And it's sort of, it's, 
definitely they definitely both get to the basis of Pennywise as a character. Um, I did kind of like the Tim Curry version just better overall, but but um, Bill Skarsgård, Skaz I think this is his name, uh, he did a really good job with the role of Pennywise, and I have I don't know if I've seen him in anything else, but um, but uh, he did a really good job with the role. Um, yeah, so it's a good movie. I would highly recommend if you like the original, um, you'll float too with this one. <laughs> Anyways, so that ends my 31 days of horror films marathon. I have no idea of coming up with a better name for it, but yeah, 31 days, 31 horror films I've watched for the first time. Thank you very much for watching and experience these movies as I go through with them. Anyways, until next year, have a happy Halloween, and if it is not Halloween, I want you to have a nice day or night or whatever time you watch this. Have a nice whatever. Thanks again for watching. Ah!